The wilderness doesn't read your resume. Just out here at Urumina Station in Northern Territory. Behind me, we're in deep and desert country. You can see some water there. and That's a pool, but uh, other than that, it's pretty dry. My family got in last night and we had the opportunity to do a walk this morning with David Ireland. Now, you may not know David Ireland, or you might, but he's Australia's original crocodile man. Before Steve Irwin, there was David Ireland, and he took us out on a walk to show us the dangers of this place and how to actually survive. You see, before this, I wasn't really appreciating just how dangerous it is to walk into the wilderness. And he was like, look, either you're in the wilderness or you're not. As soon as you leave your vehicle or as soon as you leave the homestead and head out there, you are into the wilderness. And if you're underprepared, if you don't know what you're doing, then you could potentially be dead. It's harsh and it doesn't care. It doesn't care about what's on your resume. It doesn't care about anything. It just cares about whether you are prepared to survive in these difficult conditions. What was interesting was he was very aware of how small things can suddenly make a normal situation into a very dangerous situation. If you sprain your ankle, break your leg, have a fall, don't bring enough water. All of these things suddenly change a walk in the wilderness from something enjoyable into something very dangerous. We went through and we looked at various aspects of what to do if there is an injury. Or even before we even go on the walk, have we let someone know? Have we let someone know that we're coming back? Have we got a map? Have we taken the dog? David was like, look, always take the dog if you can. The dog will find its way home. So even if you're lost, you follow the dog and the dog will bring you back. Very interesting. There's no by mail reception out here, so the phones don't work. You can't call for help, or at least very easily call for help. And if there is an injury, then what are you going to do? It was very clear. The weather out here will kill you. You've got to make a shelter. Get the shelter done, and then you're going to need a signal file. Why? Because it all looks very similar. Probably not used to turning around and seeing the scene. It looks very similar, and under conditions where there's strain and stress, Suddenly, you can't remember where your injured party was. So all of these things were very cool. This was an amazing experience. We didn't know we were going to have it. But when we turned up last night, David said, Hey, you guys should learn this. This stuff's important. People die every year from going on walks in the wilderness. And that can be out here. But it could also be the snow. It could be Tasmania. It could be the ocean. If you're a scuba diver and you can't find your boat, now you are in deep trouble. So preparation, knowing what to do, but more than that is being aware of what the risks actually are. Up until this point, I had not seen any of these things. David pointed them out. Even walking around cow grates, he was like, these things are dangerous. People sprain their ankles all the time on these cow grates. Come over to the side, keep a hand on the post so you can support yourself if you fall and don't injure yourself. I want you to appreciate that this is very similar to what many of you are facing in medicine, that you are unaware of the risks that we face. And until they happen, you're like, oh, I think I know about keeping good notes. I think I know about documenting my reasons for medicine, like why I did certain things. But if a medical legal case comes or an APRA case comes, you're about to find out that you really did not know the requirements. I've seen notes from many doctors just working in various aspects and it's like, wow, you know, you think that you're going to be able to remember a patient in six weeks or six months or six years from now and you've got two lines of notes? It's not going to work. It's very dangerous. It's not going to hold up when people ask, well, what were you thinking? Why did you do this? Trying to rely on your memory under these conditions, particularly as a general practitioner, when you're seeing 20 or 25 people a day or 30 people a day, it's too many people to try and remember. You've got to take good notes. 
And you can do this very easily. Just take a random audit of last week's patients, select particular times. So Monday, 10.15, Tuesday at 3.15, Wednesday at 12, Thursday at 10, and Friday at 3.30. Take these patients, open up their notes and review. Have a look. How are your notes? Do they tell the story? Do they tell an accurate story? Will they hold up under scrutiny? Why did you do this? What's going on? Because just like the wilderness out here, if you're not aware of the risks that you are exposed to as a doctor, then it can get nasty very quickly. This was my situation. I didn't know about this stuff. I didn't know the questions that would come. And it's been difficult. My notes now, excellent. I rate them pretty damn good. Why? Because I've been through the difficulties of what it involves not to have good notes. And the hope that it won't happen if you're in New South Wales, like we are up there in terms of most litigation, most problems. If you're in Australia, people are under stress and strain. They are not clear. And so you must be. You must be able to hold them and make sure that you get the situation clear. If you're burnt out, if you're exhausted, if you're just doing it for money, then you are at risk. And eventually, under these conditions, out of nowhere, suddenly, you'll find yourself in difficulty. Know that the amount of work that it takes to deal with any of the downside problems that can be presented in medicine is vastly higher than the actual effort to take good notes every single consult. Every consult. And this might well be something that you can put into your CPD. It's like, let's do a notes review. Okay, let's pull 30 patients at random times and review the quality of notes. This may take several hours. And not only do you want to review the notes, but also you have to look at, hey, what needs to change from here on in? This is powerful work. This is the actual desire, I believe, for the CPD. It's to go through and go, oh, okay, this is where I'm at. And a notes review is an extremely powerful way of doing that. Imagine that you have just been called by a lawyer and said, hey, we want your notes. This case is going up in front. And if you're not competent, if you're not confident in your notes and your competence gets questioned, you will be exposed. This is unpleasant. This puts so much stress on your family, so much stress on you personally can easily lead to alcohol problems or drug problems or even just watching Netflix when you should be doing work. All of these things can arise. So, a question for you. Hey, when was the last notes review? And if it's been a while, what can you do to make sure that that happens? All right, that's all I got for you. I'm going to go and enjoy the rest of this beautiful land out here. It's truly incredible. And uh, if you haven't been out here, perhaps this is a little bit of a downtime that you could come to. We caught a flight out of Brisbane, out to Ayers Rock uh, uh, Station to go and see Uluru. And then we drove, drove up to Uramina, which is about half an hour away from Alice Springs. Uh, stunning country. And if you ever get the opportunity to work with David, take that opportunity. David Island, crocodile man, extremely helpful for survival skills in Australia. All right, that's all I got for you. I look forward to seeing you another episode very soon.